Welcome back to another part in the Jetpack Compose MVVM course for beginners. In this part, we're going to be improving the looks of our category chips up in our search toolbar. And I'll quickly remind you of what it looks like now, what the shortcomings are, and how we're gonna improve it in this video. So currently we have this kind of toolbar. It's got the horizontal scrolling categories here with the chips, but there's a lot of shortcomings. Like when we click on it, it's not getting highlighted. Also the scroll position isn't maintained. So if I go to the very end, click on donut, and I rotate the screen twice, that scroll position is not maintained. So in this, in this video, we're going to work on keeping track of which one is selected. So like when I select one of these, you know, how do I keep that highlighted and how do I maintain that thing from being highlighted on screen rotations and all that stuff. So that is what we're going to be working on in this video. Let's start over in our food category chip composable. Now I'm going to change the function arguments a little bit. I'm going to add an is selected parameter. That's going to be a Boolean and by default, it's going to be false. And I'm going to add another function. So on selected, on selected category changed, and that will take a string as a function argument and it will return nothing. So another function basically. And then we're going to change our on execute search function to not take anything as input. Remember I said that eventually we were going to do that. So today's the day, today's the day that we, that we remove that string because it's going to be kept track of in the view model anyway. So we really don't need to pass it as an argument. Now scroll down and go to our text composable here, or sorry, our row composable, and we're gonna get rid of this clickable modifier and we're gonna use a toggleable modifier instead. So toggleable, and let's uh, clean this up so it looks a little better to so get those things on each line. Now the value is going to be is selected, so that's a Boolean, so toggleable, the value for that is a Boolean. The, if it's So obviously if it's true, that means that this is toggled on. If it's false, then it's toggled off. Now the on value changed will be a function. Inside this function, we're gonna call on selected category changed. I'm going to pass the category as an argument, and then I'm gonna call on execute search. And that takes nothing as input. So as you can probably guess, the on selected category changed will change that search query inside of the view model. And then we're gonna call on execute search, which will then use that search query to execute the search. And of course, don't worry if you're confused, I'm going to explain everything. So now let's go into our view model. So recipe list view model. Now, first things first, we need to keep track of that selected category. So value selected category and set that equal to a mutable state object of type food category. And this can be null. The category can be nothing. If the user say, you know, just enters a search query by themselves, then that food category is null. It's nothing. So mutable state of null will be the, the starting value, the initial value. Now I want to come into our new search function and I'm going to delete the query as input. So this will no longer take a query as input. Instead, we're going to get the query from the mutable state object. So just do query dot value and it's just going to get the value from there to do that query. Now I need one more function and that is going to be for changing the selected category. So function on selected on selected category changed. It will take a category as a string as input and that will return nothing. So value new category equals get food category. That's a function that we built a couple of videos ago. So I take the food, the, the category string as input here and it's going to return the enum. So if I take a look at this function, remember we built this I think two videos ago where it takes the, the string value as input it then creates a map out of all the available enum values, so all of these available enums, and then it finds the respective enum depending on whatever string was passed. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting that enum from that, that string. Now I wanna do selected category dot value and set that equal to the new category, and then call on query changed and pass that category. So we're setting the selected category and then we're changing the query parameter because that way if new search is called, it's gonna search using that specific category. Now we need to go into recipe list fragment and just, you know, change this because obviously we've changed the way that we do the food category chip. But before I actually update the food category chip, let's go up to the very top and define a new observable or a new, yeah, a new mutable state value that we need to watch. And that's going to be the selected category. So I'm going to say value selected category equals view model dot selected category dot value. Cause remember that's a new mutable state object that we added to our view model that we need to watch. 
So now that we have that selected category, I can scroll down to the food category chip and add those new parameters. So is selected will be the first one. And how do I know that something is selected or what does it mean to be selected? That means that the selected category would equal the category. So remember up here, we're looping through the available categories inside of that kind of enum class, that list of enums. And then if something is selected, what that means is the one that was selected by the user equals this one in the loop. So that will be the Boolean that defines whether something is selected or not. Now on execute search, this one gets simplified a little bit. Here we just need to do view model dot on What's, what is it, new search, I think is the function name. So this notation is something you would have never seen before. This is how you kind of delegate a function kind of backwards in the hierarchy, I guess you could say. So here, you know, this, this on execute search argument is a function and I'm saying, okay, delegate this, the execution of that function to view model new search, to the new search function inside of the view model. That's all that that means. Now the last parameter that we need for this food category chip is the on selected category chip. Changed. Here I need to open this up and uh, don't forget to add a comma down there. Now inside of here, I want to call view model. So view model dot on selected category changed and then just pass it because that will be the, the category. Not sure why that uh, did such a weird little tab there. So anyway, that will be our uh, new food category chip. And it looks like I'm getting a warning somewhere. So if I scroll up a little bit, right, new search here, it's it's uh, taking the query. We don't need to do that anymore because remember inside of the view model, we're just getting the query from the mutable state uh, object. So that's good. And that should be good. Other than one thing that I forgot to do in the previous video is on our scrollable row here, we need to add some padding. Because if we look at the current version of the app, you can see there's no padding at the start and there's also no padding on the bottom. So we need to add some padding to the start and the bottom. So just do padding, do start equals you know 8dp and do bottom equals 8dp. And that should be good. So now let's run this and take a look and see if this looks a little better. Okay, that is definitely looking a lot better. I can scroll this horizontally and it still looks good. There's padding at the start, there's padding at the bottom. Definitely looks a lot better. Now what happens if I click on one of these? So if I click on chicken, ooh, that doesn't quite look good. So looks like I forgot to change the color if something is selected. So everything else is working, but I think I just forgot to change the color. So if we go back into the food category chip, the, here the color is defined just as the primary color, but we need to actually change this if it's selected. So what I wanna do is do if selected, whoops, if is selected, then I want to change the color to color.lightgray. Otherwise, then we do material theme dot colors dot primary. So that's what it was before, dot colors dot primary. That way, obviously, if this Boolean is true, then it gets that light gray color. Otherwise, everything else is just the primary color. So forgot to do that, should be, should be good to go now. So let's rerun that and take a look. Okay, looks good. Now let's click on one of these chips. Boom, there you go. You see that the chicken one is highlighted. Let's click on soup. That one gets highlighted. Let's go all the way to the end to donut. So everything looks good here. Pizza, donut, all, that's, all that is good. So now what happens if I rotate the screen? The first thing is, is this still selected? Yes, it is. It's in the view model. So that, that state gets maintained across configuration changes, which is what we want. But now what if I rotate back? Is the list position maintained? No, it's not. So that's the next shortcoming that we need to work on. We need to maintain that list position even if the uh, screen rotates. That's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully that showed you or gave you some ideas of how you can keep track of something that is selected in either a vertical list or a horizontal list. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just the, you know, the process is the same. In your view model, you create a mutable state object, something that you can hold you know, whatever item is selected and then just simply compare it with one of the other entries in your list and change the color in that case. That's a simple way to keep some to keep track of something that is selected in a list. Now don't forget to leave your holiday engagement. Today's Boxing Day, yesterday was Christmas. I'm sure you guys got lots of great gifts. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Leave me some Christmas engagement. Leave me some Christmas likes. I'd really appreciate that. And as I said in the previous video, share this with one of your friends who's trying to learn Android development. If you're a student, share it with the other students. If you are working, if you're working in the industry, you know, share it with your coworkers. Give them the gift of Mitch's education. That's the best gift you could ever give somebody. I promise you they'll thank you. Imagine what they'll get you next year for Christmas. If you give them the gift of Mitch's education, they're gonna buy you like a car or something next year that's gonna change their life. So don't forget to do that. Don't be selfish, share the video. I'll see you in the next one.